Now we're going to Lexington, and we are catching up with a rock star because things were kind of busy in, in Lexington, Kentucky yesterday where they had an announcement, and it's really cool. And we're going to catch up with Kim Shelton, the CEO at Lex SC. She's coming in. Kim, you're in your dress greens. I see that. Congratulations on everything. Welcome to the morning show on the quick turn after a very, very busy day. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, we were discussing uh, the show. We were discussing what's going to happen next year. And we saw some things that were posted on social media about a rivalry that is coming and to, an, an anticipatory rivalry. And the, the new Kentucky Derby, we, we, are looking, <laughs> we are looking forward to the Kentucky Derby here on, on the SDH network. But we posited an opinion, and I don't know if you could pull this off, but if you could, it would be fantastic. Could you talk to your, your up-and-coming friends over in, in Louisville? And is there a way that you could have the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs? Is this even a possibility? Could something like this happen to celebrate the new Kentucky Derby when it comes online? You know, if nothing's off the table, right? Nothing's off the table. Um, we are so excited about the what the rivalry ahead uh, has in store for us. And look, we'll, we'll explore all the possibilities. We want to make this so special for our fans. Any ways that we can do that? I love the idea. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into that. But um, it, look, uh, I think uh, if, if, you, if you watched the press conference yesterday, uh, Jeremy at the USL talked about ambitious clubs. Um, and, and I think what you're seeing from us is ambition. And so, yeah, nothing's off the table there. The ambition that we have been able to watch with the, the growth of the franchise, both in geography and in desire, both on the field and off, for those that haven't had the chance to drop in and see all of the construction, all of the thought, all of the, the growth toward the, the next levels of the game, what in the wide world of sports is going on up there in Lexington where you guys are building out, you're building up, and you're really becoming a part of the soccer presence here in the Southeast? You know, um, there's so much going on, and it's amazing, right? Um, as, as, you know, when I came on to the club and talked to our ownership about, you know, why are you doing this, right? Uh, you know, why are you taking this on? And it, it's about, you know, for, for our ownership, it, it's, a, it's about the kids, Right. And providing an opportunity. So, you know, on our complex, we've got seven, you know, high end turf, fully lit fields for for our youth club and our academy. Um, and those kids playing on those fields overlook uh, and soon will look overlook a, a completed right overlook right now construction on a seventy five hundred seat stadium. It's state of the art. Right. As you go out there and, you, and now the turf is laid and it's you know, it's soaking in the water and preparing for for the match of the upcoming matches. Uh, opening on September the 8th uh, with the with the Super League uh, game there on September the 8th. But the kids get to overlook that and see their, you know, see their dreams kind of coming to life. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's everywhere from from the youth kids all the way up the entire USL ecosystem. And every step is now included in our pathway. What's it been like for you to see the sport grow from your time there at UK yeah. So, I mean, you, you've seen it grow from the, the UK level from the time you were in college to now. What's it been like for you to see the footprint and the growth of the sport get to this point from your first influences that you had there in the state of Kentucky? You know, absolutely amazing, right? You go from the fields that we were playing on at UK and, and you know, while I was there, UK invested and, and built a new complex. And, uh, and then I left UK and went to work for the Women's World Cup in 99. And, you know, when when that event was originally pitched to Marla Messing. It was, we're going to have it at small venues. And she said, no, 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 we're not. And we're, we're going to go into big venues. And so, and then being uh, at Soldier Field for the events we hosted in Chicago, and then having the chance to, to go to the Rose Bowl and seeing what happened there. Um, and then, you know, over the course of those 25 years, you know, we've kind of ebbed and flowed in the popularity of the game and the ability to to sustain professional leagues. And, and, and a, we're, we're in our moment. Right. I think the game's at its moment, the popularity of the game as a whole. I know a lot of our conversations on the men's side right now and what we're doing with the move to the championship league and growing and 
and, and building in that way. But, you know, on the women's side, the Super League being developed as another league and another opportunity for women to play um, at Division One soccer in our country. So, you know, it's so exciting to see where we've been. You know, I was on the first program, the first varsity program at Kentucky. We were able to really kind of start some things. And now to see where we are today is it's inspiring. Uh, every day I see it as a responsibility to continue to carry that torch um, and to create new opportunities for our kids. I do want to get into the Super League discussion uh, in, in just a little bit as a part of the larger picture there with, with uh, what you're doing in Lexington. But at the USL League One level, I mean, right now there are numbers out there, depending on your source, that the level of investment in the in the type of player that you're looking for there at Lex SC, you're not messing around, and you mm -hmm. have messed around. For, I mean, when when Cameron Lancaster was a name that was mentioned, it's like, whoa, okay, you're serious from jump here. So the level of investment in the players and what you want to see on the field has been there from the absolute beginning. It hasn't been. An afterthought, it's like, yeah, we're in League One and we're going to go to championship. No, we're going to have quality talent with our League One team, and then we'll grow and continue to go to championship. So you guys haven't been messing around at all. That's right. That's right. I mean, the investment in the players, the investment in the facilities, the investment in the staff, um, our, uh, we're blessed. Our ownership um, is committed, right? Um, they're committed. They're ambitious. You know, they're competitive, Right. Uh, fiercely competitive. You know, we're, we're pushing for success um, and success can mean a lot of different things. Um, but and again, I, I do lean back to, OK, how do we create that environment that are that are that our kids, that our youth players can see a pathway and a pathway to to, to success at the highest level? What do you think the biggest challenge in going from League One to USL championship is? It could be on the field, off the field. What do you think the biggest challenge is coming up for you? Yeah, I mean, we've got to we've got to raise the bar, right? Our, we've got to compete. We've got to compete at a high level. We want to succeed, right? You know, it, it's not a secret, all right? It's out there. You know, our success on the pitch hasn't been what we wanted it to be. We've had a lot of injuries. We have a lot of things go on. Uh, that's the game, uh, and it's part of it. Um, so yeah, we've got to we've got to dig in. We've got to compete, um, and, and you know, continue to invest in, in players that are going to get that are going to get us to that next level. How difficult is investment in today's age where as soccer continues to grow and it grows exponentially because of all of the leagues, because of all of the cities that are now involved, the Southeast in and of itself, especially in USL League One, a huge part of the footprint of the development of the league. How difficult is it these days to set yourself apart, to sit there and say, you need to come under our tent flaps as opposed to going someplace else when it comes to how you want to grow and how you want to continue to present yourself as that steward in the community? Yeah, I, I think that if, if you look at our club and you look at the investment that's been made in the in if for nothing else, the facilities and I know right now we haven't had a lot of people out there yet. You've, you've not yet seen what's being developed uh, at our new facility, and, and you will very, very soon. Um, and when you see that, right, as a player, we've had a, there was a couple of our players have had the chance now to step out onto the pitch and say, wow, I've never played on anything like this before, right? And so creating that environment, um, we talk about inspiring our young people, but even inspiring our pros, right? Um, so, you know, I think I think if, if we can get if we get a player in, in town and can see what, what we're developing and what we're investing in and our commitment to this club, um, I think I think there'll be a lot of a lot of folks that will be interested in, in coming to Lexington. Kim Shelton, the CEO at Lexington SC, hanging out with us here on the morning show. Exciting news as they are going to be heading to USL championship next year. You've got USL Super League coming up uh, in short order. What's it like for you and the staff and everybody there to, to juggle all of these different kinds of chainsaws that you're having to do and dance at like 9,000 miles an hour to make sure that everything is going the direction you want and that nothing gets left behind or neglected, that everything moves together as one piece? Yeah, it's intense, right? Um, you're building a stadium, you're launching a, a, a new team and a brand new league. Um, all the while in the midst of a, of a league one season and planning to move up to the championship league. So there's a, there's a lot happening. We've got great people, um, great people who are committed and passionate about what we're doing. Um, you know, from the, from ownership to front office staff to, you know, sporting, sporting staffs and, and players, right. I think the players get to see what we're doing. So, 
Um, it, it is a juggle for sure, um, but we've got great people. Um, March and March. Super League. And I, I know that that's another part of this equation here, the, the growth, uh, growth of the collective there. What has the vibe been like? What's the level of excitement been like as you're getting ready for this next part that is the, the large umbrella that's everything going on there in Lexington? What's the level of anticipation like? So exciting. So exciting. We're, you know, it couldn't happen at a better time, right? As you think about the momentum behind women's sports at this moment in our history, um, we see this as our moment, right? This is this is a moment in time that um, that opportunity exists, and more opportunities being created for women in sports and and here in professional sports. Um, getting the community engaged and uh, and supportive and um, rallying around uh, these women who who now have an opportunity that may not have been presented to them before um, to play professional soccer and to play it in our country. Right. Too many were having to go overseas to find opportunity. And so many of them are now home um, and, and, and back in the States. And, and so um, so uh, grateful. Right. For, for the opportunity. And you, and you see that with these with these women as we go out into the community and we host community events and so engaging um, and passionate about what we're doing. So it's a lot of fun to watch these women and in their passion for, for their next step here. Do you ever get a moment to yourself where you get to sit there and, I mean, even if it's like 15 or 20 seconds to catch your breath and stand on the sidewalk and go, man, we're going from League One to the championship in USO. We're bringing the Super League online. We're building this facility that is stadium, that is other fields to help grow the game from the youth level and there with the club all the way forward. Do you ever get a moment to yourself to sit there and go, man, we've really – we're really accomplishing a lot, even though you know that there's a lot more to do. Do you ever get that kind of a moment to sit there and say, man, we're really doing something here? You know, I've said a couple of times, we've come a long way in the last six months, right? And we've really come a long way in the, in the past two years, right? We've continued to grow and take steps. Um, but for me, having been here now, I guess, eight months, we've come a long way um, and we have a long way to go. Right. And so I think you, when you take that moment, you do, you reflect on everything that you've accomplished and we remind ourselves why we're doing this. Right. Why, you know, make sure that we understand that we're, that we're doing this, you know, what, what um, we're inspiring young people and take a moment to remind yourself of that in the chaos of a day that is juggling all those chainsaws, as you say. Um, but then know that we have a long way to go. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, we've got a bunch of games in September with you know, the Super League and, and League One, uh, with League One finishing up uh, in September and October, um, and then the Super League coming on board. We've got a lot of games coming up in a brand new stadium, and so we'll have kinks to work out. Um, candidly, the stadium will 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 still be um, building upon it. Um, so we've got we've got some uh, ideas and, and ways that we can present that to fans, and, and more to come on that, but. Um, yeah, I do uh, hope to be able to take a moment uh, after that Super League game, after we launch the stadium and we've got the Super League game, the first home match under our belt. I hope to take a moment while the lights are still on to, to enjoy what we just accomplished. What I like to ask occasionally of whether it's front office personnel or coaches or, or players when something is new and something is being built and continues to grow, I always like to ask this question. I know that somewhere – in your office, there is a to-do list, and, and I mean, it could be it could be on a legal pad that you've got right. stashed. It could be on, uh, you know, like in, in the old days. I say old days, you know, for folks of a certain vintage, where you sit there and it's like you got your you got your uh, you know you got your BlackBerry. You pull the stylus out. You write an idea. <laughs> on the pad, you jam the stylus back in. You put it away. Uh, you write a text. You text yourself a note uh, about something. And you continue to, to figure out what you need to do to, to work things out. Or it could be on that big white dry erase board that's off camera that's like, you know, four feet tall, six feet wide. And it's got a lot of squiggles on it in different colors. Yeah. Where is your to-do list when it comes to everything up there with the club? And what do you think the next thing that you can cross off of that to-do list is? Ooh. Whether it's on the USL League One to USL Championship side, whether it's on the USL Super League side, whether it's something infrastructure-wise about the collective, what do you think the next thing is that you can cross off that to-do list to continue to work things forward as you're, you're juggling all these different things? 
Yeah, the, you know, I come from the, the, the sponsorship side of the business. You know, my background is in the sponsorship side. We have incredible naming rights opportunity at this facility that we haven't, uh, we haven't even really started to talk about yet. Um, so that's the next big one in terms of, you know, generating revenue that will come back to the club to be able to allow us to do all of the things that, that we want to do. So from a business perspective, um, that's, that's, my, that, that's the big one that's on my to-do list. When it comes to jumping from League One to Championship, uh, I imagine that they're going to have you in the Eastern Conference. So, it, but, you know, the FC Tulsa goes from one side to the other. Memphis goes from one side to the other. It's kind of like the Milwaukee Brewers of Major League Baseball for a, <laughs> a, re- a reference for those of us of a certain vintage. When it comes to all of the, the, the financials that come in play for taking that big jump to right. USL Championship, I know that you're doing that in investing in players, but then there are all of those other elements that are attached to it. How much work is it going to be making sure that your budget is uh, acceptable internally to where you can make the flights to Rhode Island, to take on Rhode Island FC, that you're giving the best to the players, that you're taking care of everything going on down there in Lexington? How much of it is a concern making sure that your budgets are going to be where right now you're doing a great job, that you can continue that momentum going forward? Yeah, we're blessed that our ownership has in, have invested generously to, to to get us to the place that we are um, and to the point on the next on the to-do list. I think generating those revenues that will allow us to compete as we look at it from a budget perspective with the, the top tier of the championship league. Uh, we didn't come into this to, to, to just stay at the bottom tier, right? We want to be in that top in that top group. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're in the middle of having some of those budget conversations, but, you know, from my perspective and with my background, it is about how do we generate, we've got to go generate that revenue uh, to, to make sure that we are competing it, it with, with our investments in the club. And, and I know that, uh, you know, when you have attendance figures being what they are, you're still outdrawing some of the folks in USL Championship right now with what you're doing in League One. I know that you want to have more folks in the seats there in League One and getting ready for the new stadium in USL Championship. Uh, plans to improve attendance. One of our folks on the Twitch pitch is asking about that. What are the plans to uh, improve attendance right now this season and leading into the new barn as you go into USL Championship next season? Yeah, we feel confident that the move from Georgetown is, as you may know, we're, we're playing in a, at a neighboring community that had a, a – we're – where we were able to, to launch our club, the yeah. move from Georgetown to Lexington, I think just naturally will create um, some of that. We're also spending a lot of time getting out into the community, making sure that our community knows our players, knows our coaches, knows knows our leadership, um, spending spending a lot of time in the community, um, investing in, in marketing, right? We've, we've put a pretty strong campaign in the market, um, tying back to some of our, some of our roots. So, um, we're investing in some ways. We're spending time in many other ways, and I think just by by location and place, uh, we'll 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 feel that. And the, and the move to championship league, you know, I think people coming in and seeing that caliber of play will change the dynamic for us as well. That and having a game at uh, Churchill Downs against uh, <laughs> Blue City. And, the, and then there's that. Then there's that. Uh, thanks for coming on on absolutely the shortest notice humanly possible. Literally yesterday, uh, we dialed up and it's like, hey, we'd like to have somebody to come on and talk about it. I can't thank you enough for coming on and everybody that made all this happen. The day after the big announcement that Lexington is now heading to USL Championship next season. Thanks for dropping by. Great to see you. Congratulations on everything. USL League One heading to championship. USL Super League coming online. The new stadium. All of the build, all of it. Sounds like it's fantastic. Crash the party anytime. You've got something to say. You know how to get in touch with us. Come on in and we'll talk everything Lexington. Thanks for dropping by, Kim. I really appreciate it. Will do. Thank you so much.